I wanted a big tabletop and decided to try gluing one on my own. Maple was the choice I went with since it's hardwood and not softwood and as I see it a very elegant wood. I picked up the boards directly from Menards. It's a 1x8 and priced at around $50 per board. I keep searching for imperfections. The problematic sides will be the bottom. I don't want to see any dents or scratches on the top. This board cannot be at the edge, so I will put it in between, somewhere in the middle. I want nice edges on the sides and nice boards on the top. Finally, I'm placing the boards where one board cut is facing up and the one next to it is facing down. This should theoretically prevent the boards from shaping up or down in the future. Now it's good. Down, up, down, up, down. Using a chalk. One, two, three, four. It's easier and cleaner to glue with sawdust. I attach the plastic bag to the dust collection exhaust vent for that purpose. As a side note, maple is distinctively heavier than cedar, which I used in the past for my projects. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will cut the sides at the very end. I'll do every 16 inches. The measuring tape has red lines or red markings so I can see where is 16 inches every time. I'm using the Walt plate joiner to drill holes in the boards, while trying to make them at the same height by pushing the boards down with the help of my wonderful wife. Making the hole a little bit higher or lower than their neighbor will cause problems when gluing the boards together. In other words, one area of the final tabletop will be a little bit higher or lower, hence this step is important. I'm not using any glue in the slots nor over the biscuits to avoid biscuit telegraphing, which might indent the wood in the future. If you do it on your own and plan on leaving the pieces outside overnight, check the weather forecast. I didn't. Another mistake I've made is that I didn't put any kind of pressure clamps from the top and bottom. As you can see, the pressure is applied only from the sides. This is where the sawdust comes into play, very useful. My attempts in removing the glue spots with a wet cloth obviously failed. The best solution that worked for me was using sawdust. As I mentioned, I didn't check the weather forecast. Rain started, and even though I covered the tabletop with some tarp, water still found way inside. And in the morning, I found out a big bow in the middle, along with a board which end was soaked in water. I tried to fix it by putting counterweight on it, for another day, and for a while it looked like it solved the bow and straightened the tabletop. I made sure that I'm having 90 degrees here, I added two clamps to hold everything in place. Now I'm ready to cut. Now that the first side is cut, I need to cut the second one. I decided that the length of my table will be 90 inch. Now it's time for a little bit of sanding.
I started the sending process all the way from 40 to 320 paper grid. I wasn't pressing on my orbital sender and was moving at a speed of around 1 inch per second. Also, I set the sender speed to max. It took me around 4 hours. Now that I finished the first board, I'm going to move to the next ones. I'm changing the disc every board. This wood is gorgeous. I'm usually working with uh, soft wood such as pine and cedar. This is hardwood, maple. It's even fun sending it because I immediately see the results. Those two are sanded, those three aren't. And this is only the 40. I didn't even start really sending it from 80 and upwards. Such a beautiful wood. The 40 grit is done. This was the hardest part, at least for me, because I had too many uneven boards. If I had the jointer, then I would have square and make all the boards equal and fine. Initially, I wanted this to be the top, but due to my lack of experience, I left it outside and it was raining. Even though I covered it, there was a tiny hole in the tarp and the water penetrated into this area, which eventually bented the wood. Another reason for the bent was I didn't put any kind of pressure from the top. You live and learn, but this will be my bottom and I will just do some light sanding to remove the glue and that's it. I will not go up to 320. If you're planning on using this tech cloth in your project, make sure to use one-time gloves as this stuff is really sticky. I bought those measuring cups at Menards. They have level guides marks on them and used two-thirds of shellac and one-third of denatured alcohol. This stuff made me feel lightheaded, so after this attempt I used a mask. I applied the product with natural bristle brush and waited an hour between coats as it was mentioned on the technical data bulletin. After finishing this project, I found out that it would have been much easier and faster to use a lamb's wool, as demonstrated by the Walnut Workshop channel, since I have a big area to cover anyhow, and that it was enough waiting 10 minutes between coats. After practicing on a small piece, I started. I went slowly, trying to go over the same area as less as possible, as it will generate more bubbles. 
It's recommended to start few inches away from the edges to avoid any drippage sliding down the edges. I probably used much more product than I should have and that's why my sanding process had those leftovers. For the sides I used some paper towel or cloth. I seal the product between coats so it will not vaporize. I continued applying and sanding and each layer made it prettier than the previous one. Now that one side is done I'm ready for the other one. I apply the same amount of coats on the other side. I think it was a total of 5 coats on each side. That's really cool. At this point I really thought that this project came to its end. But then I noticed that the bow that was caused by the rain returned and as a matter of fact grew bigger and bigger. The two monitors hanging at the edge probably accelerated the process. Anyhow it was inevitable. Apart from the bow the left leg started to make some weird noise. I called Vivo and the great customer service sent me a new leg free of charge. To straighten the tabletop, I bought those metal rods, which were perfect in length. I'm starting from the middle, 
towards the ends. I'm doing every so a screw, two holes of nothing, and then another screw. Hopefully this will hold it in place. I'm driving the screws in with the lowest speed, which is one in my case. I'm making sure that each wood, each board, is having at least two screws in it. In this case, this one has three, this one will have two, but at least two. I position the metal piece in such a way that I will have at least two holes connecting to the metal frame of the table. Unfortunately, I can't position it in all the four holes because the gaps here are not the same as the gaps here. So I fixed this problem. I don't have a um, cap. I don't have a cap here. But I do have here. See? Much, much, much smaller right now, but I still, I don't want any bow or cap. On the other side, you can see how bad it is. For those wondering what's that thing, it's a whole house fan, was very useful in ventilating the paint but is very ugly. Now that the tabletop is straightened up and Vivo sent me a new leg, this project is almost done. Time taken, around 4 days. Cost, without the tools, including the metal rods, around 900. Including the tools that I've used in this video, around 3000. If you're interested in seeing how I installed this hardwood floor, including issues I faced and solutions I came up with, and if you like learning how I installed this gorgeous poplar wall and ceiling, the LED lights and the girl with the pearl canvas and frame, stay tuned, I will upload those videos soon. As always, thanks for watching.